Hello guys, I said I'd do it today, so I'm doing it y'all, but this next video I'm not putting a timeline on, it's just there will be another one. Um, today I want to talk about that breast cancer gene that we hear about, okay? So for those who don't know me, I'm Carla Owens um, of O2 Rehab Solutions, and we are discussing BRCA1 and BRCA2 which are breast cancer suppressant genes, okay? So I think there is a misunderstanding. Um, BRCA1 and BRCA2 um, are genes that both men and women have and actually that we want because it helps us to combat different forms of cancer in our body. Where it gets tricky is when those genes become mutated, okay? And that's when you start seeing in women the higher incidence of breast cancer and ovarian cancer. And then in men, it presents with higher incidence of breast cancer and colon cancer, uh, prostate cancer, I'm sorry, prostate cancer. So, but this is the funny thing about the men thing, okay? Well, I'm not gonna go there. Am I gonna go there? Okay, so this is, I will go there. So this is kind of the tricky thing about the men thing, right? So first of all, about less than 1% of men get breast cancer, right? When they have the BRCA1, BRCA2 gene mutation, then that number goes up to about 6%. So still, in the grand scheme of things, it's not super high. Doesn't mean we don't address it. Doesn't mean we don't need to know about it. That's why I'm telling many things too. But it's not that high. But what you do see is a 20% increase in the jump of prostate cancer, okay? So men and women have both 50% chance of passing on the BRCA1 gene mutation and to the BRCA1-2 mutation. So what I gather or what it means to me is that what you're going to see in the men instead of all these cases of breast cancer, like, you know, you may see breast cancer in some of the women on the men's side, but what you're also possibly going to see is that history of prostate cancer that may be more, you know, prevalent in the men on that man's side of the family. So I think that's something we have to think about. You know, we're looking for just all history of, of women and breast cancer, but maybe we should be looking at not only the breast cancer in our women, but the prostate cancer in our men. Okay, so I, I didn't, I shouldn't have went there, but I did. Because I think, I think it's something to think about. Because um, a lot of times women go in, yeah, um, there's breast cancer on my side. And men say, no, I, I don't have any breast cancer on my side. Or no, we don't. Braca, I'm a man, you know. But you could be the person carrying it into the next generation. And it's, it is important that we know that. Um, so anyway, I got caught off on a tangent. Um, so how do you know? How do you know? How do you know if you have BRCA 1 and 2? Uh, the first thing you do is you have the conversation with your doctor, especially I'm going to go through a list of things that may make you a higher risk for the genetic mutation. But you go to your doctor, you receive genetic counseling, and at the end of the day, you have to have genetic testing to have your, your for sure answer, do you carry the mutation or not, right? But how do you know if you should be even going you know, to get this because, you know, if you're not probably a higher risk person, maybe you'll have some insurance conflicts, you know, where they don't want to pay for the testing. Um, so those, we'll talk about that. And I'm going to read that from a list because there's several and I don't really want to miss any because I think it's important that we hear this and get this right um, so that we know what we're looking for, right? So somebody that's had ovarian cancer at any age, okay, that puts you at higher risk for having BRCA1, BRCA2. Uh, mutation. Um, breast cancer at 45 or younger. Two breast cancers in the same woman before 50. Two relatives with breast cancer with one of those relatives having it before the age of 50. Male breast cancer period across the board. If you have male, anybody with male breast cancer, you know, genetic testing is probably indicated. Um, this one is if you have breast cancer at or before the age of 60, that is triple negative or ER or PR or HER2 negative breast cancer, then you should get genetic testings for BRCA1, BRCA2 mutation. Three or more relatives with breast, ovarian, pancreatic, or aggressive prostate cancer. And if you have Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry. And I did look this up a little bit because I was like, okay. But it is uh, related to the persecution of Jewish people. 
and I guess that gene pool may have been smaller um, during that historical occurrence and you do see higher rates of BRCA1, BRCA2 mutations in this particular racial group. Um, and while we're talking about it, people that lived in islands are in more of isolation. So they said, let me see if I can find that. I think it was like Scandinavians. Uh, oh, I remember one of them. It was the Polish in Chicago, which is interesting. So that was interesting to me. Um, it didn't mention Canadians. I think it was Norwegians. Um, people from Iceland. Here it is. Norway, Finland, Iceland, uh, Scandinavian, the Jewish, like I said, Polish in Chicago, and the Canadians. So who knew? Um, and, and that's the end of that list. Um, so I hope now what you got from this video is number one, the breast cancer gene. And eh, there's a little twist to that. We do want BRCA1 and 2, both as men and as women. Um, but the key is the mutation. The mutation is what we don't want. The mutation is what puts us at higher risk for the cancers. Um, and two, genetic testing is how you figure out, um, am I at risk for being BRCA1, BRCA2? In women, you will see more breast cancer cases. In men, you're going to see a higher level of prostate uh, cases or breast cancer. But, you know, if only 6% of men are coming down with uh, breast cancer, you know, what you're going to see is more of the pro prostate diagnosis, correct? Um, but both men and women are 50% responsible, each 50% responsible for passing that gene on to their children. Um, so we are at an age where we are fighting against cancer and we are doing better at it. And we are having more and more survivors every year. And so at the end of this whole thing, I just want to remind you that you are strong, you are resilient, and you are beautiful. Prevention is the best medicine. Thank you very much.